If you tweet often, you've probably had some random bot at you for using the wrong your or being a communist or whatever, which is good because it lets you know that the nerds are spending their time well. Revenge of the Nerds 3, the next generation. Guess who's getting the last laugh? Twitter turned 10 this week, leading to much celebration and reflection. 10 is basically a million in social networking years, and there's a lot to look back on and be proud of. The Arab Spring, Black Lives Matter, the Biden liquid swords. I'm on a mission that they can say is impossible, but when I swing my swords, they are choppable. There are innumerable reasons why this weird microblogging website is a vital part of so many of our days, and you can read about them in the approximately 8.5 million Twitter hot takes published daily, which were amplified by a factor of five this week. I am not here to offer a hot take. Instead, I am here to offer a bot take. What was that? Uh, Sam's computer. Smash my computer. <laughs> it's like totally fine. Good. Twitter bots come in many shapes and sizes. These bots are programs that are coded by humans and then sent up in the cloud and loosed upon the world. The boring ones will just tweet a link at you when you're posting innocently about iPads or free cams. The nefarious ones you can buy in order to, you know, boost your ego with fake followers. But the most special ones take advantage of Twitter's open API to create something truly sublime. You're about to discover a career opportunity where you will never get laid or be laid. So, you know, it wasn't long before it kind of began to accrue a strange um, cult following. Horse eBooks is a crowd favorite. Maybe the first account to make you think that Twitter was something special, or Twitter was something a little too stupid and weird. But Horse eBooks, at least initially, was a legit spam bot designed by a Russian programmer, along with about 170 other bots, to sell eBooks. The thing that's interesting about Horse eBooks is that it's terrible at its job. Its sole purpose is to get you to buy these horse ebooks about adopting a horse, but no one does that. The result was infamously poetic, but accidentally so. The first deliberate use of some code in Twitter's open API seems to be every word, which first tweeted on November 30th, 2007. Every word was the dawn of a new Twitter bot era, one designed to make a deliberate statement every 30 minutes, even if that statement is just ding. And of course, thanks to every word, we also get its edgy cigarette smoking cousin, fuck every word. So while Horsey Books gets the rightful credit as the high watermark for randomly generated e art, every word is the start of a new human directed wave. A tall, smart, splashy wave of pure art. Real highbrow stuff. Like a Beetlejuice that's always listening. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. It's showtime. Or Big Ben, bonging away every hour on the air. Or Exosaurs, which pairs dinosaurs pulled from Wikipedia with a confirmed exoplanet and then credits that discovery to one of the account's followers. Of course, this naturally led to a trolling bot fuck exosaurs, and that same principle was then applied to exo riders, which creates a companion for each new discovery. Naturally, there is now auto-generated exo erotica. <sighs> of course, the ability to pull information from tweets goes beyond usernames and Wikipedia entries. Pentometron crawls Twitter and then retweets accidentally rhyming bits of iambic pentameter from inadvertently Shakespearean users. If Horsey Books is a prime example of spam lit, then what are these bots? Pentamatron is not spam. It's a program carefully built by a person, designed to recontextualize and repurpose the existing content on a platform that is evolving and being updated daily. There must be some precedent. And I also wrote um, Exterminator and Port of Saints and the last words of Dutch Schultz. Most often associated with my dude, William S. Burroughs, the cut-up literary technique was really pioneered in the 1920s by Dadaist poet Tristan Cesara, 
who would create poems by pulling words out of a hat. Does that sound familiar? Burroughs and other authors in the 1950s frequently used newspapers to source their cut-ups. And we can probably agree that in 2016, Twitter is basically the newspaper. We can also probably agree that the 1950s were cooler. Every particle of this universe contains the whole of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, you and yourself have the whole of the universe. I cut you up in a certain way, and I caught up the universe. Mm -hmm. Would known joke lover William S. Burroughs have loved a computer program that randomly paired the subject from one newspaper headline with the action item from another headline for often hilarious results? I think yes. What do you think? Is fuck every word basically naked lunch in 2016? I don't know if we should hope that that is true, but I would like to know your opinion, so please let me know what you think about all of this in the comments, and subscribe for new episodes of This Exists every week. Be excellent to each other.